factory, they had a very small turbocharger, no intercooler, so when the turbo gets hot... Most cars that have chips are electronic fuel injection. However, in the early 80s, from 1980 to about 83, 84, depending on the manufacturer, some switched to fuel injection in 85, some switched in 86. But there were computer control carburetors, OBD1, computer controlled carburetors in 1980 through 83 or 84, depending on when they switched to fuel injection. So just keep that in mind. On a lot of computer controlled carburetors, it's more beneficial with any carburetor to put a mechanical carburetor on because computer controlled and carburetors were not meant to be. That's why it evolved to fuel injection. So keep that in mind. Today we're going to talk about performance chips because when you do a lot of modifications on your car or even if it is stock, performance chips allow all your modifications to come together and work together and increase your performance even decrease your fuel e increase your fuel economy, do all kinds of great stuff. Well, in this case, I've done a lot of modifications to my Buick. And I've ordered what's called a turbo tweak chip because the factory chip is only good for the factory turbo. And a lot of those aftermarket chips are assuming you have a mildly tuned car to a stock car. Well, this company here will custom make chips to the modifications that you have. And this is an OBD1 car. OBD1 is like 80 to like 94, just before 95. So that's OBD1 style computer chips. Here's the chip for example. And it goes right into your computer, which I'm going to show you. And important thing to know about computer chips, as you can see, it's wrapped in a special barrier ESD sensitive paper or plastic. It basically protects from any kind of static discharge from your hands or any static electricity which can destroy a chip on contact. So a very important thing to know is whenever you're working on the computer of your car, one touch to any of the circuit board circuitry can result in damage in your computer and you won't even see it with your eye. It's stuff you see with a magnifying glass or very high magnification. So you're not going to see the damage and all of a sudden your car's going to run like crap and you don't know why. Well, that's why. If you, just the static from your hands can destroy a chip, destroy your computer. So you got to remember, whenever you're working on your car, as far as the computer goes, you got to ground your hand or wear grounding straps around your wrist. But if you don't have that, you can ground your hand on something metal, the frame of the car, the edge of the uh, metal on the door frame. Ground your hand before you handle anything that's electrostatic discharge like this chip. And when handling the chip, you never want to touch the metal parts of the chip. You always want to handle it by the plastic edges. Because if you touch the metal, you just destroyed all this money you threw down. And possibly ruin your computer and a bunch of other circuitry in your electric system. So, anyhow, remember, electrostatic discharge is what you have to protect your chips and your computer against whenever you're entering your computer. So here we go. We're going to start. First, you want to look up where your computer is located on your car because every car, the computer, every manufacturer, they put the computer in different places. Some manufacturers put them in the engine console. Some put them in the firewall. Some put them in the glove box. There's all kinds of places the factory locates the factory computer. Well, in my case, it's in the uh, passenger side kick panel. All right, we're now in the interior of the Buick. Here's the kick panel where the computer is located. So I've already removed the screw. In this case, there's one screw holding this kick panel because I've had this computer off a few times and I've changed different chips. I've tried different chips out in this car and I've discovered from a lot of online discussions that this is the best chip to get for the Buick Grand National Series, so that's the one I'm going with. And it's totally custom to my application. So I'm going to work on getting the computer out. Now you can choose to totally remove the computer or just get it out enough to change the chip, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to unplug all my computer. You can if you want to work on a, on a bench or something, but I'm just going to take the computer out enough to where I can access the panel, the access panel right here. Right here. Here's Behind this access panel is the chip. So when dealing with the computers, 
All right, you want to be careful of anything static. So, <laughs> now this is the point where I'm going to take off my gloves, ground myself. I got myself grounded to the edge of the door where there's metal. So, I can, I can open the chip protective ESD coating, and you want to handle it as much as possible by the ESD protective pl shield plastic. So I'm going to set this over here for now. I'm going to find the socket that takes off the access panel to the computer. There we go. Take off the access panel to the computer chip. You got to be real careful with these computer chips because if you don't align it just right and you bend one of those tabs, you just ruined your computer and your chip. So you got to be very careful at the point of any time you're handling the chip. All right, we now have the access panel off of the computer panel. Still got my arm grounded. And sometimes these chips take a little bit to get out, but you gently just go each side at a time very lightly on the edges of the plastic with a screwdriver, just kind of, but you have to go equally, and then when you can remove it with your hand. Okay, this is what the chip looks like. If you look close at this chip, there's a notch on the right-hand side. Now that tells you the chip can only go in one way, and the notch has to be in this exact same position on the old chip as on the new chip, so you're focusing on this. This is an old Hypertech chip I've been using for a while, which is just a mild tuning chip that's all I had at the time it's better than a stock chip it also turns on your uh, your uh, electric fan sooner so it's a very good thing to have but this new chip is gonna be a big upgrade so I'm gonna start to remove this chip <clears throat> ground everything carefully remove the chip and here's what it looks like inside performance chip all right now we're going to carefully set this down. There shouldn't be any discharge problems on this piece of paper, so I'm going to set it down right here for now. And get ready for my new chip. <laughs> Put the old chip in the electrostatic bag because it's still a good chip. I'm just not going to use it, but I can sell it. All right. Remember that notch we were talking about here? That notch has got to be in the exact same position. And they even put a notch down here on the computer so you won't screw it up. See that? See the notch down there? So the notch has to be in the same area as the notch to put this new chip in. So. And you handle it only by the plastic. Handle the chip only by the plastic. And you can see some grooves that you need to line up. Grooves with grooves with the notch. So I'm carefully gonna find my grooves. Carefully find my grooves. All right, finally got the chip in just right. You gotta take your time with this step, I mean, because it's kind of cold here, and electronics and the cold and the heat. I mean, it's kind of hard to uh, manipulate, but as you can see, I finally got the chip in even. And you just carefully line up all your grooves. Always make sure the notch is in the same exact area as the notch on the other chip and the notch they provide for you to line up. And you're just going gently around the tops of the chip until you get it all seated. You don't want to seat it cockeyed or or you know misaligned you want it perfectly set level and work your way in slowly and easy till it's finally all the way in and you can't push too much force on there you split the chip or break the little fingers and of course that destroys all your money and all your computer and all your chips so you want to be very careful with this method and get it all even once it's all even then you go and put your inspection cover back on and you can see by the grooves on there, we already know which side it goes on. It's already shaped for the chip. So then we slowly put this cover back on. And the bolts, the little bolts, finger tighten them first, and then put them on with a very, very light torque. 
very light. All right, finally got the chip back in, like you saw. I put the inspection cover back in. Now I'm gonna reinstall the computer back where it goes. So you don't want this thing dangling, hanging around. You wanna install it right back where you got it before. Out of the way. Thanks again for watching our segment on performance tuning and this segment was on performance chips and installation and I can't overemphasize enough remember the electrostatic discharge in your fingers you know anytime you have static it's right in your body all the time you got to ground yourself to something before handling anything with electrostatic sensitivity all right so thanks for watching again and remember, if you like us, like us on Facebook, like us on YouTube, and check out our BudgetBoosting.com website and watch all our videos. Because remember, knowledge is power. It's horsepower.